Good news everyone! Oil prices are getting expensive again. Wait, that's good? Over the past month there has been quite a war for oil in the exact opposite way you're probably imagining. There was way too much of the stuff. Nobody wanted it and we were running out of places to store it. I don't know, try burying it. Put it back where you found it. That left oil prices cratering to the point where the most expensive part of the oil shipment could soon be the barrel. So what happened? Well, oil prices got a one-two punch. First, demand bottomed out last month as locking yourself into a less than sanitary vehicle with a ton of strangers suddenly lost its appeal. You don't want to get on a cruise or a plane? But what if I guarantee your tropical week long vacation will be extended a month as we quarantine offshore and every nation rejects our passengers? We'll keep the water slide running. Also, I'm not sure if you noticed, but nobody's driving. Not a great time to visit grandma. So demand was at the lowest point it's been in a while. Then the supply two punch hit. Supply went up. The OPEC, or Organization of Petroleum Exporting Companies, and their non-member friend Russia met to figure out how to cut production to keep prices high. That meeting, as you can probably imagine, didn't go as planned. Oil prices have been on a steady decline since the outbreak of coronavirus in China as travel restrictions and contagion fears hit demand for crude. The latest crash, though, is the result of a failed agreement between the OPEC oil cartel and its ally Russia. A deal to implement new production cuts fell apart over the weekend, leading the Saudis to slash prices while ramping up production, sparking fears of an all-out price war in crude. What happened was, Russia was the first to break, saying, we'll keep the current production cuts in place, but we're not going to cut more than that. To this, Saudi Arabia replied, ah, you don't want to play ball. Well, alright, screw you guys, we're going to boost production and sell our oil at a discount. Ha, <laughs> good luck selling all the extra oil you guys are pumping now. To understand Russia's perspective, we have to mention a country most people don't think of when they imagine global oil export markets. America. Ever since the shale revolution, America has become the largest producer of oil and is preparing to export more oil than Saudi Arabia. Problem is, the only people our oil companies answer to are investors. America's private oil companies have been huge beneficiaries of state owned oil companies creating a false scarcity that we could fill. So thank you OPEC for literally subsidizing our shale sector. Now from Russia's point of view, all this strategy was doing was propping up US oil producers at the expense of everyone else. While it still made financial sense to prop up prices, it's like that one high school project group that everybody had to participate in at some point, where three of you do all the work and that fourth guy just coasts along in the background. It seems as though Russia is now saying, screw it, we don't want to work either. We saw the exact same strategy from Saudi Arabia play out a few years ago when they tried to bring America to our knees in the oil sector. This was reported in 2014. The demand and tumbling prices is seen by some as a deliberate move to send rival producers to the wall. Reports say many shale companies are defaulting on their loans because the oil prices plunged below break-even point. One analyst said the Saudi-led policy of pump, pump, pump was aimed at squeezing Russian and American shale drillers out of the market. Yes, back then Saudi Arabia tried to bring America into the fold with a strategy of pump, pump, pump to temporarily drive down prices and put shale companies out of business. They basically told us, America, if you want prices to recover, why don't you cut some of your production? We're not cutting ours. Saudi oil minister, and brace yourself for this pronunciation, Ali Al Naimi told reporters, if they want to cut production, they're welcome. We are not going to cut. Certainly Saudi Arabia is not going to cut. After two years of price fighting, starting in 2014 and ending in 2016, Saudi Arabia blinked. Exactly two years after Saudi Arabia coaxed its fellow OPEC members into letting market forces set the oil price, it has performed a nifty half pirouette. Whew, pirouette, as if people didn't think The Economist was pretentious enough already. 
Just say 180 like a red-blooded American. On November 30th, it led members of the oil producers cartel in a pledge to remove 1.2 million barrels a day from global oil production. Yes, America told OPEC to go frack themselves. Because we shirked off OPEC during that two year period, when Saudi Arabia sends an alt email to cut oil supply, we're not on that list. We just keep pumping it out independently as an OPEC competitor. Now Russia's sitting there supporting the price of oil to help American companies and thinking, what are we doing? We should be at full production right now as well. Sure, we might lose money at first, but if we can hold strong, we can be an OPEC competitor as well. An unfortunate, or fortunate, depending on your opinion of fracking, side effect of Russia's fight with Saudi Arabia is, well, it de facto ignited the fight with American shale again. If the oil price goes down somewhere, it goes down everywhere. Some of the biggest losers from the failed OPEC oil summit are undoubtedly US shale oil producers, which generally need oil prices above $50 a barrel to make any money, and which were ironically hoping their OPEC rivals would make production cuts that would keep shale's head above water. So this brings us today, when we just saw US President Donald Trump on Thursday tweeted that he had brokered a deal with Saudi Arabia and Russia to cut output and arrest the price route. President Trump said he spoke with Russian President Vladimir Putin and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, adding the two nations are expected to cut output by 10 million barrels a day. This is where things get hazier than the air around an oil field, because the only person who seems to have agreed to a truce between Russia and Saudi Arabia so far is Donald Trump. The reality of the current situation is that the Saudis partially backed up their US ally with a call for all producers to meet and stabilize the market. Yet the kingdom stopped well short of promising production cuts and maintained its insistence that any deal would require cooperation not just from fellow members of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and their former ally in the Kremlin, but from all major producers including the United States itself. Russia was also quick to deny any agreement had been reached. Now, The frustrating reality is we have three unreliable narrators with three different stories right now, and I don't know who, if anyone, is telling the truth. First you have President Donald Trump saying this is a done deal. Mohammed bin Salman was on the phone with Vladimir Putin and they're both going to cut oil by 10 million barrels a day. He followed that tweet up with a second tweet later upselling his earlier claim by saying, wait, they could have actually agreed to 15 million barrels a day. Good, great news for everyone. Unfortunately, a Russian spokesperson said no phone call between Russia and Saudi Arabia had happened. Russia is maintaining the position that we're not negotiating with anyone. We're in control of our own oil production. And anything Trump says to the contrary, well, it's just a move to temporarily bolster oil prices. In a sign that something might be happening though, Russia's energy minister Alexander Novak told Reuters that Russia no longer planned to ramp up production after the collapse of its deal with OPEC last month. Of course, this might be less of a sign of cooperation and more of a sign that spite can only lead a policy decision so far. There's no demand for oil, and again, we are just running out of places to store all this oil. Increasing production right now would be like Groupon embarking on a very new expensive advertising campaign. Get savings on group activities. You know, they're still sending me emails, so I can affirmatively tell you that me and four friends, if we want to escape from a room in Midtown Manhattan, can get a great deal right now. The final piece to the puzzle is Saudi Arabia. The spite is strong with this one. Their state owned oil company tweeted out about their pride in continued production. It was tweeted on April Fools Day though, so maybe there's hope. Now their goal seems to be beat both America and Russia into OPEC submission. And this brings us to the latest news. And this last part is still sizzling, it's so hot off the presses. OPEC scheduled a meeting Monday in appreciation of President Donald Trump of the United States of America's request 
and the U.S. Friends request. And it's canceled. The specific reason for this cancellation is that Russia and Saudi Arabia do not see eye to eye right now. The meeting has been rescheduled for Thursday. Now, there's one final piece to this puzzle that I'm looking at. I just don't know how it's going to fit in, but it seems relevant. U.S. oil executives met with the president Friday at the White House, and there was speculation he would ask them to cooperate in cuts. That's right, President Trump may soon end another Obama era policy, not letting OPEC influence American oil output. Now, this is where we hit the mother of all roadblocks. While most countries' oil companies are state owned, America's are privately owned. And let me just summarize what that meeting's discussion might have sounded like. Hey, oil companies, you guys should really work together to coordinate supply, and we'll just call it a trust. How could anyone be antitrust? And use that coordination to artificially jack up prices. That's super illegal. Even if leaders in the United States backed collaboration with OPEC, operators in the US shale patch would somehow need to parcel out their share of any collective cutback. American antitrust laws, unless they were changed, would make any such effort fraught with legal risks. It's either that or a government mandated production cut, which I can imagine going over just great in Texas and other oil producing states. So that's exactly where we stand on the oil price war right now. There's a lot we still don't know with facts filtering out every day. I wonder what's going to happen at Thursday's meeting. Stay tuned to find out. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube. First I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, Join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.